For step three, you're going to sew the rise or the crotch of the boxers. So you're going to take the two open parts here, put them together, pin them at the top, and then just kind of slide one leg inside the other like that so you just have it out of the way. And then grab the area where you sewed it and at the seam stick in another pin. You want to keep that seam flat. And then a few more pins, one at the bottom of the curve, and then a few more so that the whole thing is pinned. Now at this point, if you want, you can take a piece of tailoring chalk and at 1.5 centimeters from the edge you can draw this line. Some people find it easier to sew a curved line if they have a line to follow. But it will work the same way if you just put it at your machine and sew it on the 15. So now we'll bring it to your machine to sew it for the first part. I free armed the machine so I could slide part of the boxers inside and underneath and then I've lined it up at the 15 foot down, needle down. I'll take that first pin out at the top. I'm going to sew a few stitches, reverse a few. And I'm sewing on this line that I drew, but I'm also checking that it's on the 15. So the first part of the rise is straight, so it's not so bad. You're going to sew a good 20 centimeters or so of it straight. And then as you get toward the bottom, it starts to curve. So this is where a drawn line helps or just being very careful that no matter the shape you're keeping the cut edge against the 15. Take your time, check underneath, make sure nothing came up, that you just have these two layers of the rise together. When you get close to the seam, stop, go needle in, foot up, and just check underneath that that seam on the bottom is flat as well. When you know it is, you can put it down, remove that pin, you're going to sew straight through that, keeping it flat, until you get to the original stitches that you have. And you hook up with those, line them up, do a little reverse, and needle up, foot up, cut the threads still attached, then cut the um, original threads up at the top. And now you're ready for step two, or part two, of the rise. You're going to press the red button at the back of the foot, remove the metal foot, put it in your bin so you don't lose it, and get in the habit of tightening the foot and the needle as well because you know they do wiggle loose. Put on an open clear plastic foot, make sure your threads are at the back, and then you're going to change the settings. We're going to do uh, some zigzagging on the curve. So A1 is going to go to A3, 0 up to 5, and you can keep the stitch length at 2.5. So bring it back. Again, slide it under so you don't sew it shut by mistake. You're going to line this up. Instead of right on the 15, a little bit away from the 15. You can see it with this clear foot. You're going to try to zigzag right beside that seam that you just sewed. So sew a few stitches, reverse a few. Now try not to go over that seam. Try to stay inside the seam. So again at the top, it's straight. The first little bit shouldn't be a problem. And you'll start hitting the curve and then you have to kind of slow down, adjust, do a little rearranging if necessary, stop if you need to, make sure nothing has gotten caught underneath. Trying to keep it on the inside, very close to that stitching line that you just did. I'm getting close to that seam in the middle so I'm going to stop, needle in, foot up, make sure it's flat foot back down, kind of keep it flat with my hands, go right over that seam, keep going. You may have to pull on the boxers a bit to flatten it out. You're going to go all the way up to the end of that seam where you clipped it and do a little reverse. Then pull it out, cut your threads, cut the original threads, and then basically you're going to cut off half of this seam. So you're going to start at the bottom, 
where the zigzagging ended and very close to the zigzagging but not through it. Don't cut through any stitches. You're just going to cut this up all the way just to reduce some of the bulk. When you're finished cutting, the about roughly about a centimeter off all the way, bring it to your steamer and we'll press that seam flat. To press the rise that you just sewed, zigzagged and trimmed, you're going to get a tailoring ham from the closet, slide it inside, grab the steamer, and then you're just going to press that seam to one side. The right or the left, it doesn't really matter. You can't press it open because it's sewn shut now. So Now the first part is straight, so it's not so bad. But then as you get down, you get to that curve. And it's always easier to press a curve on a curve, which is why we're using the tailoring hem. So you go in, you try not to create any wrinkles, and you just press the whole thing to one side, all the way down, so that that seam that you sewed is now flat and professional looking, all the way down, with no wrinkles or creases on either side. And then you can flip it to the right side and press again the same way on the right side.